This is Honors Geometry Lesson 8.5, Continued Properties of Kites. So first of all, in geometry, what is a kite? A kite is a quadrilateral that has two pairs of consecutive congruent sides, but opposite sides are not congruent. So you can see these two sides are congruent, these two sides are congruent, but these two sides are not congruent, and opposite sides are not congruent. Sometimes you'll hear it written as two pairs of distinct consecutive congruent sides, therefore the top two can't be the same as the bottom two. What's special about a kite? You can see if you would fold it right down the middle, the left side would be identical to the right side. So we know angle A is going to be congruent to angle C, and we know angle B is going to be bisected if we fold it down the middle, the same with angle D, but you can see angle B is not congruent to angle D. All right, so it says um, in a kite, the diagonals are perpendicular, so let's draw those in. There we go. Whoops, okay. So the diagonals are perpendicular. Why do we care about that? Now we can use Pythagorean theorem. We can use trig. All right, um, we also know that one diagonal bisects the other diagonal. You can see this diagonal is bisected. And then the last thing we talked about, we said that we have one pair of congruent angles. They're called the non-vertex angles. This angle is congruent to this angle. Let's practice. All right. So we can see we have a kite, and we're given a 100-degree angle, a 40-degree angle. And again, if you can visualize folding this right down the middle, you can see angle E is going to be congruent to angle G. We know all quadrilaterals have 360 degrees. So we're going to subtract the 140 that we have. That means we have 220 left over. We're going to split that in half. And you can see these angles would each be 110 degrees. Again, if you could sort of visualize folding this in half, the line of symmetry, you can carry the 110 up here. Again, we know all quadrilaterals have 360 degrees. So we're going to add our 110 plus our 110 plus our 60 gives us 280. We're going to subtract that from 360. And it looks like our missing angle is going to be 80 degrees. All right, let's throw a little algebra in here. So this, the first thing I would do is I'd say, if this angle is 112, I know immediately this angle is 112. And again, you know all quadrilaterals have 360 degrees. So I'm going to take 112 plus 112 gives us 224. Take 360 minus 224. Let's see what we have left over. Looks like we have 136 degrees left over. And again, don't assume these two angles are congruent. They're not. It says we have exactly one pair of congruent sides. That's our 112. But what I do know is the sum of this angle plus this angle gives us 136. So we're going to do that. I'm going to say 2y plus 1 plus y gives us 136. Combine my like terms, I get 3y plus 1 equals 136. Subtract 1 from each side, I get 3y equals 135. And 135 divided by 3, it looks like y is going to be 45. All right, over here, again, this angle is congruent to this angle, so I'm going to call this angle 30 plus 10x. And let's go ahead and add 71 and 29 together. Looks like that's 100. Um, so we're going to take 360 minus 100 gives us 260. So I know the sum of these two sides has to be 260, or if we want to make it a little bit easier, we're just going to divide that by 2. We know that each of these angles is going to be 130. So I'm going to go ahead and just solve for that. I'm going to subtract 30 from each side. Divide by 10. It looks like x is going to be 10 in this case. Okay, let's do some side lengths. All right, and it's telling us to use the Pythagorean theorem to find the lengths of the sides. So we're going to do that. 
and it tells us to leave it in radical form. So we can see these are right angles because we know these are perpendicular. So we're going to say 3 squared plus 3 squared equals c squared. That's 9 plus 9 equals c squared. 18 equals c squared or the square root of 18. If we break that down, that's 2 times 9, 3 times 3. Bring a pair outside. The leftover stays inside. So you can see the length of our kite is going to be 2, whoops, 3 root 2. And we could do the same thing for the other side lanes. We're going to say 3 squared plus 5 squared equals c squared, or whatever. 9 plus 25 equals c squared. And that looks like that's going to be 34 equals c squared. Let's go ahead and break that down. I need a little bit of room here. So I'm going to say 34 is 2 times 17. And 17 is prime, so is 2. So it looks like 34 is already simplified. So we're just going to leave it as the square root of 34. All right, let's try one more where they give us an angle and a side length. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is write everything I know. I know that these angles are all 90 degrees. I know that a triangle has 180 degrees. So I'm going to take 90 plus 18, get 108. And then I'm going to subtract 180 minus 108. And it looks like our missing angle is going to be 72 degrees. So that's right here. And we know that a kite is symmetrical. So if this is 72, I know x is also 72. So if we fold it right in half, they would be congruent. So I'm going to go ahead and say x is 72 degrees. We're going to do the same thing down here. We know that if this angle is 29, we know this angle has to be 29. We know that angle is 90, so we're going to take 90 plus 29. Gives us 119, 180 minus 119. Looks like our missing angle here, y, is going to be 61. Okay, and finally, let's find the side length. And we're going to use, let's use some trig. So from the 29 degree angle, uh, I have adjacent, and I'm looking for a hypotenuse. If we think back to Sakatoa, adjacent hypotenuse tells us we're going to use cosine. So let's say cosine of 29 degrees equals adjacent, which is given as 12 over hypotenuse, which is what we're looking for. I'm going to cross multiply. Divide each side by cosine of 29. And we get x equals 12 divided by cosine of 29. And it looks like it's going to be about 13.7. Please try the practice problems. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.